President Varumpa, you have the floor. Mr. President of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. President of the European Commission, ladies and gentlemen, I am very pleased to welcome President Zuma in Brussels for our third summit with South Africa. Let me start here also just as we started the meeting. I would like to extend my congratulations to him for the very successful World Cup organized in South Africa during the summer. The World Cup was a truly historic event, and not only for the fact that the European team won for the first time outside Europe. <laughs> it clearly sent a message from South Africa to the world that South Africa has truly stepped on the global stage. It has become somewhat a commonplace to say this was our first summit after the entry into force of the Lisbon Treaty. But it may be useful to point out it was the first summit after the European Council two weeks ago devoted a lot of its time to the relations with our strategic partners and South Africa is one of our strategic partners. Let me just recall, the objective of the European Council discussions was to give new momentum to the Union's external relations, taking full advantage of the opportunities provided by the Lisbon Treaty. We agreed on the need for Europe to promote its interests and values in a spirit of reciprocity and mutual benefit. The European Union's strategic partnerships with key players in the world, such as South Africa, provide a useful instrument for pursuing these objectives and interests. It was in this spirit that we worked on a very rich agenda today, stretching from global issues to regional topics to our bilateral strategic partnerships. On the team of global governments, I assured President Zuma of our firmly rooted commitment to effective multilateralism, especially the role of the United Nations, universal values, and an open world economy. It is always useful to remind ourselves that the European Union is not only the first trading power in the world, but it is and will remain the largest donor to countries in need. Of course, global governments may only work effectively if it becomes a two-way street. It has to be based on mutual interests and benefits and on the recognition that all actors have rights as well as duties. The full participation of emerging economies in the international system should allow this benefit to be spread in a balanced manner and its responsibilities to be shared evenly. I also confirmed, President Zuma, that the EU is committed to making the G20 summit in Seoul a success. We share an interest in ensuring the global recovery and implementing the G20 framework for strong, balanced and sustainable growth. The meeting in Seoul should bring agreement on the governance reform of the International Monetary Fund. We need to maintain the momentum on financial regulatory reform as well. I also expressed my appreciation to President Zuma for the work South Africa has done with regards to energy and development issues in the G20 context. As far as regional issues are concerned, I would like to point to the upcoming third EU-Africa summit in November. EU-Africa relations have taken on a new dynamic in recent years. This summit will give us a further opportunity to pursue together with our African partners the objectives of economic development, good governance, transparency and accountability, also in the context of the joint EU-Africa strategy. We hope for a result-oriented and well-attended summit with concrete deliverables. And this requires careful preparation and efforts from both sides. We very much count on South Africa's leadership's role in the preparatory process. We reaffirmed that the fight against impunity must be a common endeavor anchored in our common values. And in this context, I confirm the emphasis the European Union attaches to the independence and integrity of the International Criminal Court and all of its organs. It is the literally text of our joint declaration. Finally, I would like to say a few words on our discussions on the situation in Sudan, 
In Sudan, the transition enters its crucial phase. The high-level meeting of the 21st of September in New York was encouraging. However, and given the little progress on the ground, we have to maintain the momentum. President Obama's recent initiative deserves our full support. I expressed my appreciation to President Zuma for South Africa's active political engagement. I encourage him to invest even more political capital in all aspects of the Sudan issue. This would certainly bring significant positive influence on a very fragile situation. I also invited him to join us in focusing on capacity building in South Sudan. <coughs> and before I hand the floor to President Barroso, let me finish on recalling the importance of humanitarian access in the context of Darfur. We are looking forward to see the government of Sudan engaging in recommendations made by the African Union high-level panel on Darfur. <laughs>